Folktales and lore often change from region to region, family to family. There's rarely any concrete version of most folktales. As such, a version one person knows of a particular tale may be different from a version another person knows. Both are equally correct and are the results of regional or family tellings of that tale. So many people go to this side of the road to see the Independence Gate behind me, or they go over there to see the notorious Sodimon prison. But only a few people go to the other side of the road. But I can promise you this, that after watching today's video, you also want to visit the other side of the road. Let's check it out, Muwakdong. I'm on an almost impossible journey to explore all 467 neighborhoods of Seoul, one by one. And today, I'm taking you to the heart of Muwakdong, a tiny neighborhood. But what it lacks in size, makes up for in mysterious folklore. And that's what we will explore today, with no one less than Sean, heritage researcher, folklorist, co-host of the Dark Side of Seoul podcast, and co-guide of the Dark Side of Seoul Ghost Walk. In other words, the perfect man to guide us. If you look up at the, the brown sign there, if you look at the hancha, it says in Wang Sa. Now the middle character Wang is king. Now in Wang means benevolent king. The middle character king is part of the original name of the mountain. This mountain here. At some point in the not so distant history, probably during the Pak Chung He era, uh, the name was changed. They used a different character Wang. Uh -huh. which is formed by two different radicals, pronounced the same way, uh, but it means prosperity. So it meant something different, benevolent prosperity mountain. When we walk through here today, we'll see any hancha will be the original one. So the people here do not recognize the government's replacing of the, the hancha for one. Yeah, so there's a specific reason why this is called king, mm -hmm. and I'll show you that in Okay. We didn't even enter the mountain village yet and had already stumbled upon something exciting. Yes, I kind of love this stuff. I don't want to point this out. You may have seen these around. This is called sotte. And they're designed to look like ducks. And they're put on top of poles, so they, they uh, work as totems of some sort. And they're there to ward off evil. And you can see them going into old villages and things like that, especially villages that have really deep cultural and folkloric aspects connected to them. So, evil spirits, be careful of the duck. It's so cool to know, otherwise it's just, yeah, a sculpture, a sign. Right, and this is something that really, I think, um, kind of drew me to folklore studies, was that folklore is everywhere. Mm -hmm. It really is. But you have to look for it, you have to talk to people. So this is the gate of the village. This is a shamanic village. The people live here. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all like uh, residential buildings? Residential, yes. Ah, I and see. The majority of these people, if not all of them, are practitioners of shamanism or shamans themselves. Oh, that's interesting. It's really beautiful. So this is in Wangsan. So these are the main peaks here and the main stones and whatnot. And we're going to go up and explore through these. So the higher peak on the left side is the in Wang. That is the benevolent king. Is that big rock on top? Is that the head? That's exactly, yes. Right. And then his body, his shoulder goes to the right. right. Okay, I see yeah, it. You see it? Yeah, I see it. It's a king sitting. But it's not a king as we know who would sit on a throne and rule a kingdom. It's a Sanshin, a mountain god. It's a deity. It's a protector god of the nation. Wow. I mean, this is incredible. You can make a, a rock. <laughs> Yeah. Seems so simple, right. very interesting with a story. People have believed this kind of thing for thousands and thousands of years. There are uh, uh, people who say that this area has been significant to shamanic worship or animistic worship uh, since before recorded time. Of course, we don't know that for sure because yeah. it, wasn't, it was never recorded. The king, the In Wang, the king there sitting down, isn't alone. He has a, he has a buddy with him. I'll tell you what it is. It's a tiger. It's a crouching tiger. That rock over there. Exactly. That's the tiger. So Sanshin are very often depicted with animals. And uh, usually it is a tiger. Uh, you can also see them with magpies and things like that. I will forever look at this mountain now with the image of a tiger and a king. And that's the point. This rock, yes, is just a rock. But not just a rock. It really does look like a king and a tiger. See, this is precisely why I do this series. To learn about stories like this. Truly fascinating. It's getting even more interesting, more spiritual, and more religious. But here we go, into the shaman town. And 
even a store that seems like a simple convenience store is here with a purpose. What's this, a shop? Yeah, it's a shop, so <coughs> souvenir shop. Well, yeah, it's a shop. Hello. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I don't know how to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is a little shop. The owner's quite nice. They've been here for a while. They'll sell things that people may need when they go up to the shrines, like candles, incense, things like that. Also, candies, sweets, because those are offerings. Uh huh. Okay. So, and we'll see evidence of all this when we go up. At least there's a lady there. She has several candles in a bag. So, that means she's going up to pray. Uh, we have we have candles, we have yeah. CDs. CDs, yeah. So playing the traditional music and things like that. Also yeah. alcohol. Booze, uh, yes. Because they all, also, uh, I would say donate. No, they offer. They offer. Yeah, they alcohol. offer alcoholic drinks. Alcohol is extremely important to Korean culture. And it's not just the idea of hanging up with day on a Friday night getting, getting shit-faced. <laughs> it's actually a deeply cultural thing. Um, alcohol to Korean religious culture, spiritual culture, is similar to a lot of cultures, um, a wine in the Catholic Church, for example. Yeah. The, yeah. the blood of Christ. And even a copy Yeah, even a yeah. Couldn't get more Korean than this. Couldn't get more Korean, exactly. And, uh, and this one, huh? Yes. Yeah, the sausage. Oh, yeah, the sausage. Yeah. Yeah. I love these, yeah. actually. My, my, my wife calls me a grandfather. <laughs> so I make these things. <laughs> yeah, and these are like ribbons and things like that that would be important. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll see, actually, things like that um, among the stones and the trees yeah. and the altars when we go up. Mm. Oh, my daughter was here, she'd want that. <laughs> not, not to offer to eat, right? Oh, she, yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. She's like, offer it to me, daddy. A little further up is a building that might look insignificant. Well, that's what I thought. But it's not insignificant at all, apparently. The original location of this was probably uh, uh, Namsan. It dated back to the early part of the Chosun dynasty. So it was moved here uh, in the... Uh, in the early earlier years of the Japanese occupation, because they they got it off got it off of Namsan and they built a different shrine there, and so they, they brought it here, and this is where it is today. It's an extremely important place for shamanic rituals, which are called good different good. These shamanic rituals still happen here all the time. Um, one of them would be, for example, the Nedim Gut, which is the initiation ceremony, initiation mm -hmm. ritual, to bring someone into shamanism to make them a shaman. Would you say that this is kind of like the capital for the shamanist religion in Korea? Or Yes, I would yeah? say that. Um, okay. Guksadang is kind of like the national shrine for the shamanism. Yeah. This, this whole area is often said to be the epicenter of Korean shamanism. This place has something gritty about it. There's yes. Like it's not super clean. No. Some things are rotten, some things are abandoned, some things are badly maintained, other yes. things look new. It, yeah. it's, it's a weird combination of, yeah, of yeah. everything. Yeah. I think it's, uh, to me, I always look at it as life. Yeah. Life, sometimes our life is well maintained, sometimes it's not. We have parts of our lives that are in shambles, we have parts that are fantastic. Uh, and uh, I, th I often see, see that represented in like, places like this. I was seriously worried I wouldn't see any prayers or offerings, but I couldn't take 10 steps before seeing some. Offerings everywhere, prayers too, and in my eyes, random places. Walk around to this area, you can smell really strong, muckily smell. There's some spots where they probably did an offering, a ritual. So here too, you can see where I'm standing, so random, but really strong makkali smell. And even the rock is still wet from the makkali. It's also my first time seeing a shaman at work. The spiritual vibe is high. There's the shrine there, and you can see that that's actually a spring, that's a well. So you, you see the, the, the bowls and whatnot, and they're going to um, uh, you know, collect water and whatnot. So they're coming here to pray. This is so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I've never seen something like this. Right, right. Video you do there? I hear this so often and it's funny to me. This is exactly the kind of stuff that many foreigners would like to see. 
It can't get more interesting. 네? 애국은 볼게 많잖아요. 아, 어, 예, 예. 뉴욕 같은 데 가봐요. 탐투시 산에 올라가면. 네. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 혹시 질문 하셔도 돼요? 응? 질문 하셔도 돼요? 질문해도 되냐? 네, 뭐. 궁금한 거 있어요. 어, 잘 모르는데 어떤 거? 여기 많이 와요? 네, 한 달, 한, 한 두세 달에 한 번? 아, 그럼 왜 많이 와요? 기도하러. 어, 기도하러? 네. 가족들 네. 건강하고 뭐 소원 뭐 성취하고 뭐 이런 거. 아, 그래요? 그 항상 거기에? 여기하고 저 위에. 아, 위에? 선바위요? 어, 네, 선바위. 예, 예. 어, 아시네요. 선바위. 예, 예. 산신각. 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 그 인왕. 아. 인왕. 인왕산 말고 예. 저 위에 산신각 있어요. 어, 산신각. 어, 예, 예, 예. 음, 예. 거기 이렇게. 예, 예. 아. 예. 네, 감사합니다. 네. 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 예, 예. 안녕하세요. 네. 안녕하세요. 네. 네. 이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
that from our perspective here is on our right, but coming up it's on your left. They're in meditation and the one on the on our right here has fallen asleep with his head on the shoulder of the other monk. The other stories that I've heard is that it's Muhak and Tejo. So Tejo was the first king, the founding king of the of the Chosun dynasty. Muhak was his Buddhist monk advisor. So he had two main advisors. One was the Buddhist monk, Muhak. The other one was Confucian, Zheng Dojun. And when they were debating about where to put the borders of the city after they chose this area as the capital of the new dynasty, Chosun. They were debating about where to build the fortress wall, where to put the borders. And so a lot of the stories go that Muhak, the monk, was saying that different rocks in this area, especially some of the stories is, is this one, the other one is that it's the, it's the benevolent king mm-hmm. himself. He said that those rocks should be on the inside of the fortress wall. Uh-huh. So they should be part of the, the capital. Yeah. But the Confucian uh, advisor, the Zheng Dojun, said no, they should be on the outside. So they had this big debate. One of the folk tales says that they are having this debate and then they said, okay, let's end it and we'll continue tomorrow. That night, snow fell. Uh-huh. And in some variations it said that the, when the snow fell, it fell on the inside of the rock. So no snow fell on the rocks. So then that was an indication, a sign to everyone, even Muhak, the monk, that those rocks had to be excluded from the capital. Mm-hmm. And so they were then, the fortress wall was then built, the property of, of the city itself, of the capital, uh, the northern boundary, then excluded a lot of these sacred rocks. And then Muhak's response was, I accept this, but from here on, monks will be carrying the books of Confucian scholars. So he, he foresaw the kind of the decline of Buddhism throughout the Chosun dynasty. Jaffel is quite steep. What do you see there? Blue house. Blue house. And what do you see there? Gyeongbokgung. Mm-hmm. It still looks like a tiger from up close. I can seriously put this neighborhood in the top three for now. Every step along the way was fascinating. And now you see that something simple as a rock, a mountain, a tree, a ribbon, the smell of makuli, a plateau, you name it, can have deeper meanings and deeply cultural stories. The benevolent king, the monk, Things you would have never guessed by simply walking through Muak. But with a little more curiosity, a new world opens, and more importantly, a better understanding of Korea. Muak is also just a good neighborhood for a hike, a view, and a city wall walk. I will remember it as the national capital of shamanism. Sean has also released a second comic, The Dark Side of Seoul Weird Tales from Korean Lore. Super cool, so check it out. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next Dong video. How do? Uh, yeah, always come here, just remember that you are, even though you're in a mountain, you, you are technically walking through sacred grounds. Yeah. So it'd be just like going into any other holy religious site around the world. You'd be respectful, so just remember that.